My lecturer hired me as a naked maid and is uncomfortable now, but I need him to get over it. I'm F in my early 20s and he is at least mid-30s. I work for a cleaning company that provides naked or lingerie-clad maid service. There is no intercourse or contact, and if limits are broken, the customer is removed from the list. The customer may choose a kind, for example, hair color, race, weight, age, and gender, but they cannot request a particular maid. The corporation assigns them a maid. Both the customer and the maid have the option of choosing a fictitious name, and no images of either party are shared. Any institutions the customers and maids are affiliated with, for example, school or job, are also logged so that something similar does not occur. All of this is done to maintain confidentiality. Clients may request that the same maid return after the first session, but that's all. I'm stating this to demonstrate that he couldn't have requested me or realized it was me beforehand. I received a message from the organization stating that a close and nameless customer had ordered a lingerie-clad maid and that I was the kind for him. I walked in, in jeans and a t-shirt with the lingerie below, so he wouldn't see anything, knocked, and my professor answered the door. I realized what had occurred and told him that the agency usually filters these things out, that there had definitely been a mistake, and that I could either remain and be professional or find him another maid. But whatever he chooses, we should both just forget about it. He requested another maid, so I contacted the office, explained my situation, and departed. According to the office, no one realized we were affiliated with the same institution owing to computer-slash-human mistake. I had to go to school with several classmates a few days ago, and we bumped into him. He seemed uneasy and uncomfortable, wouldn't look me in the eyes, and wouldn't even address me directly. We bumped into him again later that day. And he was just as bad, if not worse. We also had some courses towards the end of the previous academic year. After the mix-up in which I wound up at his apartment, and I was similarly disregarded, but I ascribe this at the time to the online structure of the classes. This would be one of those things, except that I have courses with him throughout next year, as well as private sessions to discuss my academics. These must be completed with him, are mandatory, and may have an impact on my grade. While I am confident in my ability to behave professionally, I am afraid that he is not, since it has been many months and he is still not over it. I'm spending a lot of time and money into this, and if this is an indication of how he'll behave for the rest of it, I'm afraid I won't receive what I paid for and my grade will suffer as a result. I'm at a loss about how to proceed. I can't afford to lose my grade, yet chatting to him may make matters worse. Any suggestions? Update, he informed me. I scheduled a meeting with him during office hours to clear the air, as suggested in my previous post, and then followed it up with an email that simply stated that his school is starting up again and its final year. I'd like a chance to meet with him to talk about my dissertation and make sure he approved of the topic before I launched into it, which is completely standard and everyone else does, but was enough to panic him. The maid service I work for also provides fully clothed maids. So from what I can tell, he went to the university saying he paid for a fully clothed maid and only used this service because of their extensive vetting, but when I arrived, I offered to do it naked in exchange for extra help on my dissertation. No, he said. Obviously, this is nonsense, and I obtained a recording of the phone call I had with work and provided it to the university, which was sufficient to halt the investigation, but I couldn't obtain his payment records to prove he paid for lingerie due to the anonymous payment system, and any more than that would necessitate a legal case, which I cannot afford, and even if I did manage to stay here, I would still have to attend his classes as they are mandatory, but at the same time he must have reported me the moment I put in my meeting request, since I received an email from the person in charge of this less than a week later. I'm not sure what the heck he's thinking. I'm guessing he assumed I'd report him and decided to get ahead of it but it makes no sense given that all I did was seek a meeting. Whatever his reasoning, I'm leaving. I'm one year away from finishing my degree, so I've inquired about transferring to neighboring institutions. But since this occurred just at the start of a new school year, it's going to be 10 times more difficult than if it happened during the summer or last year. The only benefits are that I haven't been expelled slash suspended, so I won't have to explain anything to anybody. The university seemed to be happy with simply letting me leave peacefully, 
and another instructor is giving me a recommendation. The agency has also said that he will be blacklisted and that this information will be shared with other services, so hopefully he will not be able to do this to anybody else. Simply. Story 2. I female 23 dumped by boyfriend male 24, and now I regret it. Please read before forming an opinion based just on the headline. I've spent a lot of time thinking about sharing this and writing it up, but here we go. Last weekend, after an amazing 1.5-year relationship, I female 23 dumped my then-boyfriend, male 24, because it had been my gut feeling for a while and overall, I did not feel as emotionally invested or in love as he was and it was just difficult and I do honestly believe he was the perfect boyfriend in so many ways, but probably just not perfect for me and I felt he is much better suited to another girl. I will admit that it was very unexpected and unexpected for him, given that we had just returned from a weekend away with my parents, so he was understandably shocked and hurt which I obviously felt terrible about, but I knew that the longer I waited, the worse it would have been for both of us. Plus in December it is Xmas, his birthday and New Year's, so I preferred to do it before all of that as well. It wasn't something I would have done if I wasn't absolutely certain, and it was also a choice I kept mainly to myself, not even telling my family until after, and just discussing with a handful friends previously since I didn't want too many second views. I was going to message him a week or so later after the breakup to give him some time to process, be angry, or whatever he needed, so we could arrange a time to talk and exchange belongings, but he actually messaged me a few days later after the initial breakup, and we had a fairly normal conversation for a bit. He asked if we could chat in person soon, which made me a bit nervous, but I believed he simply wanted to say what he needed to say, get some closure, and swap possessions. I wanted to meet somewhere in the middle and get a coffee or anything, but he insisted on driving to my and that we would just chill slash talk someplace close, so I accepted out of respect. We decided to meet on Thursday night, and he came over that night and waited outside for me, and I got his items for him while he didn't have mine, so I knew where it was heading already. We drove somewhere nearby, parked, and began talking, and he had obviously prepared a lot and was basically expressing his thoughts on why it didn't have to come to that, and that we should get back together etc., as well as pointing out how good the relationship was, which it was, and highlights over the last year and a half. He made several fantastic arguments and gave me a lot to think about, but my conclusion was still my decision based on my major reasons. We went around in circles for a long time after that, unable to reach an agreement since we both desired entirely different things. He brought me home, and we still weren't satisfied with the outcome, so we simply had to leave things there, and I got out of the vehicle. He was also really upset at this moment, and it felt terrible. We haven't talked since, despite the fact that it was just a few days ago. Deep down, it was something I never anticipated or wanted to happen between us, but over the previous six months, particularly the last month, that sensation simply wouldn't go away, and I was becoming more worried and off. I wasn't always as excited to do the things he wanted to do, like when he'd throw ideas about our next getaway, holidays, what to do for Xmas, etc. And I didn't see a long long-term future together like he did and he'd occasionally mention marriage, living together, kids, etc. To be fair, not always in a super serious way or as if he wanted any of that super soon and how he said I was the one and we getting back together has obviously crossed my thoughts and been a possibility since both the first split and the latest chat. After the first split, I largely thought about it because I felt awful for him, but after our latest conversation, I'm thinking about it much more seriously and genuinely regretting what occurred, and I'm at a loss for what to do. The relationship was fantastic, and he is an incredible man, and I believe it is worthwhile to attempt to work through the issues he raised, but now I'm not sure what I meant to do when I should contact him how I should go, and so on. Extra information. I never informed him about my sentiments until we split up, so it was all new to him, which I realize is cruel, but I didn't see the sense in bringing them up until we were breaking up.